So what we're going to do in this video, this is going to be very much a Q&A sort of video led by me. I'm going to try and get these two. This is Sean, by the way. I'm sure if you haven't, I've said it already, but go and check out Lewis's YouTube channel. It's all about how Dropworks are set up. So you'll know Sean, baby daddy. He's just, how old's the kid? Six weeks. Six weeks, what's the name? Harry. Harry. Hello, Harry. And uh, Harry can watch this back in like 20 years time and rip it, rip the pee out of it, can't. So I'm going to get them. I'm going to break this down, production of how they make rum and kind of debunk some of those terms that this one uses in videos where you might be thinking, what the hell is he talking about? So, step one, we've got a, what, a tanker that delivers molasses out the back there. The molasses get put into those great big, how, many, how, many, how much molasses do those tanks hold? 15,000 litres. 15,000 litres, and that's just molasses. But you also mentioned something else. That's 45,000 45, litres. Yeah. You also mentioned something else, cane juice honey. Yeah. What's cane juice honey? So, do you want to tackle that? Go on, go on. Yeah. Um, so, I want to come a the... Yeah, yeah. How I got got it in the See, place. See, it's going to waffle, but we'll come on. Come on, come on. Can you like... So, there's a, there's a lady called Natalia in Sheffield. Yeah. Who I met what, um, at a previous workplace. Um, and she was like, oh, I've, you know, I import evaporated cane juice, Penella. She started off by uh, importing Penella, which is yeah. a solidified um, evaporated cane juice. So, basically, they crush the cane... They evaporate it in like big old fashioned pans, yeah, just out in the sun, um, and then eventually it'll it'll either go to like honey or it goes solid. So originally she was importing the solid stuff, and obviously we can't we can't make rum from like something that's beca become crystallized. Right. Otherwise, it opens the door for like white sugar. So you know, that's a bit of stayed in liquid form, okay, right? So um, we import the honey, so it's been like evaporated to the point where it's well consistency yeah um and then they pop that in ibc's so big thousand liter tubs and send it to us so this will be different to molasses because it hasn't gone through the exactly. process of it's, un it's unrefined so like right. any, like it's not even a byproduct of being the refining process it's literally the juice from the k like concentrated can it's i like can i just pick it yeah can i build you up on something go as well it's not that it's not gone through the producer process of creating sugar it's not going through the process of extracting sugar yeah, yeah. that's that's because yeah. sugar, sugar's in there, right? creates the same as extracting i don't yeah. think posh words like that <laughs> but it's got all the sugar still left in it okay. which is really important because when you ferment it it's really fermentable so there's a load of so yeah. is well, cane juice honey sweeter than molasses oh, yes yeah, yeah, yeah it's that, okay it's not only milliard reactions so it's also paler in color it's kind of like uh, a greeny brown. There's another word there, isn't there? Yeah. It's another word. <laughs> it's not what? Manot. That's a million reaction. So um, when... So the, the, <laughs> of course. But, yeah. Right. So when they're making sugar, refined yeah. sugar, obviously the last is the byproduct. And the reason it's black in the first place um, is because it's basically been, not burnt, but like caramelized to the point where it's black. Right. And a million reaction is the okay. technical name for how that ends up black. Right. So I'm just checking my mic. It's on. Right. Okay. With it. Right. Does that make sense? Yes. That makes sense. So we're not talking about ducks. No, Mallards. We've got ma yeah. ma 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 Malliard. What's it? I always say Malliard. Is it French? Right. Probably. It's probably in French. It's French. It's like when you burn a steak. steak. Yeah. Or that bit of like charring yeah. you get on a bit of meat. It's the same thing. Okay, cool. So I think most people at home now will understand that actually molasses will produce a very different type of rum to cane juice, honey, which again will produce different types. And we've got that. What do you do with the molasses then? What do you do with that stuff when it comes in? Because it's like this. You mix it with water? Yeah. Right. Bacon. And that goes in those tanks down there, basically. Yeah. That was the well, wire hold on, hold on. Here's, here's a good question. Here's a good question. Why do you mix it with water? Why do you mix it with water? That's, see, there we go. Why? Right. Why do you mix it with water, Sean? It's completely stable when it's in its concentrated form. Yeah. So, like, bacteria can't grow in it, and neither can yeast. So, it right. can't be fermented. Why? Because the osmotic, oh, I mean, what say osmosis, didn't you? Yeah. The osmotic pressure of the molasses. Yeah. So osmosis is like the transport of water, I guess. Right. Um, and so. Over that from biology. Yeah, it's just biology. So right. if the yeast gets in there and the molasses is concentrated, the water's pulled out the yeast to the yeah. molasses, which kills the yeast cell. Right. And so yeast and bacteria can't grow on molasses in right. concentrated form. You might find, if you ever, ever see a very old like tank full of it, that there'll be a tiny little white shimmer on the top of bacteria. And that's water that's dropped in and that did that top layer. 
And that kind of proves the point you have to okay. dilute the molasses before anything can live on it. So so you dilute it down and then you add your yeast. And we can talk all day about yeast. We won't because I heard a video where you were talking about yeast cell structure sizes and all that. Well, let's talk about yeast. But, okay, just to keep this simple-ish for people at home. Yeah. Different yeast strains, yeah. which is basically fungus. Is that the right? How can we dumb uh, that down? Yeah. Dumb yeah, let's down. call them that. Yeah. Dumb, someone write down. It's basically a fungus will yeah. create different flavors with the molasses. Yeah. Yeah. Basically. Basically. Yeah. So we can get more technical, but we're not going to. But that's it. I've always yeah. described it as yeast. Like, imagine it as a living thing, because it is. Yeah. It eats sugar, craps out alcohol, and farts a bit of carbon dioxide. Nice. Yeah, that's beautifully put. That's beautifully put. Not all the molasses turns into alcohol, though. The yeast can't eat all of the sugar that's present, because they only eat certain sugars, and it's usually about 50% of the molasses Sorry. that they can turn into alcohol. The rest of it stays in solution. And so that's why, well, molasses has quite... Uh, gives quite a different rum because you've got all those sugars that stay intact in the still. Um, so you don't get the sugar over during the distillation, but you do get uh, some of the like flavors that come from having that sugar in solution over. Brilliant. I think I said there was nothing there that I kind of picked up that I think I need to dissect. I I'm getting know. better. I'm getting now, better. Now, I, think, I think this might cross over in a bit, but I'm just going to ask you a very simple question. How many yeasts are you using at the moment? Bear in mind, I'm going to ask you a question about marks a bit later. So how many yeast, because you've got your one trinity yeast? Yeah, that's yeah. technically three yeast in itself. Three yeast in itself? Yeah. Right? And then you've got loads of others. Yeah, we've got loads of others. For predominantly. So you're just experimenting at the moment. We uh, we sort of use, well, if you qualify the trinity as one, we yeah. really use three. Three. Cool. So we've got, we've taken our molasses, we've diluted it with water, we've added yeast to it, it's fermented for... Any time between that's that's what that term is fermented, isn't it? That's what we're doing. Yeah, fermented. It's fermented any time between a couple of days, and we've got like loads of different length fermentation like, going on. Okay, so it's like minimum four days. Minimum four days, um, and then up to like we've experimented with a month, fifteen days. We've got lots of length experimentation going on. General average, I reckon that we're on like eight days for the. For most of what we make, is it fair to say again? This we we're probably going to come back to this, but is it fair to say that the longer it goes, the funkier? Is that the right? Yeah, it's definitely more complex. More more complex. There we go. More and the amount of different flavors coming out of a rug. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Right. So we've prob- probably technically, you'd be correct to say that more congeners are formed. Congeners. So I avoided that. Word. Yeah, I see, there's another word. In it. What what's congeners? They know what congeners are. Oh, they do. <laughs> I don't. Come on, what's congeners? Just I have read Matt Petrick's book, but. <laughs> You'll know more than me. <laughs> and I was just going to say, like, flavor, flavor component, components. So different, essentially different flavors. Hmm. Different. Because yeah. we talk about esters, but e- esters are. What's an ester? A type of flavor. Well, ester is a really simple thing that everyone needs to understand, actually. Yeah. It's an alcohol that is binds with uh, an acid. So when those two things are forced together and they, they create a new chemical compound called an ester, right? And the ester is something we would smell and associate with a flavor. So right. when you drink a glass of wine and you smell passion fruit or blackberries, yeah. you know there's no blackberries in there, right? You know they didn't add passion fruit to it. You know those are right. esters that you're smelling that right. remind you of passion fruit. Right, okay. Your olfactory senses are amazing, but you're smelling right. esters, which are acids and alcohols come together cool right i think we've got that bit clarified so now it's been that diluted molasses with yeast that's created the what's that term is that's a wash is that correct yeah i mean i intend to call it a wash a wash. You, have, you have to remember that i come from a whiskey background so i occasionally call it wash. yes well it's worked before it's been yeah. um fermented ah yes yeah right cool so then that goes in yeah so still in the middle yep Wash. So that's your wash still. So what is that doing in a nutshell? Basically stripping all the alcohol out. Stripping all it. So you're applying heat, you're boiling it. Yep. And it's coming off the still at what? Not very high strength. So like it starts off at 50 in the morning. Yeah. One zero. Yep. yep. And then it's dropping down all the way to 2% when we right. turn it off. So then you collect that. Yeah. And do you... Does that ever get aged or... No, no. So, so it's... It's... it's, it's it doesn't go straight into a still, does it? It does, yeah. It does. I mean, because so it'll actually go off if it's left. Yeah. Because it's 
it is spirit technically because it's been distilled but it's not strong enough to be stabilized um, and they tend to be called low wines and they smell like kind of grapey they can be full of we're going to come on to that we've got low wines and high wines here don't worry <laughs> don't worry you're not getting away with that one but carry on well, i was explaining what low wines really see but there's multiple different types of low wines just to add to the confusion yeah <laughs> wash still will make about a thousand liters at sort of 25 26 percent right they tend to be so it's, so it's not rum it's not rum right, because the legal definition is minimum of 37 and a half percent yeah right so it's not rum. So it's not rum so it's just like on the way to becoming yeah, science way, it's like uh, intermediate uh, low wine, but everyone not low wine, low wine, low wine. Low wine. Is that actually a proper definition? Because I've yeah. never heard of low yeah. wines being referred to in the rum industry before. You're you're literally because, because, people, because people outside of the UK don't tend to do two distillation runs. Ah, they'll right. use a column or they'll use a double retort. Right. Okay. So, all right. So while well, now you've mentioned those two, because I think that's the next station in process, isn't it? You've got your liquids, your low wines, and then you've got a choice of two stills here yeah and and that's the very next part of the process yeah no obviously no. not i no. missed something what happens in between? what we've missed is the fact that not all of our liquid goes through two stills it doesn't all go into that middle wash yeah. still. i mean it doesn't right no that the wash still feeds the hybrid still yeah and we then choose whether we want to do another pot still run and avoid the column yeah so twice pot distilled yeah or we go through the column and have lighter column still run Totally separate to those two stills is the double retort that you put your fermented wash straight into. Right. You don't do low wines in the pot. Yeah. You put your, you put your, he's laughing because he know because <laughs> he knows there's a, a, another complicated bit to, to say to that, which is that you put your fermentation, once it's finished fermenting, your wash, yeah. you put that into the double retort and right. you do a single pass. Okay. And that's how you create your double retort. Right. Run. I, go on. Because you've got some right, so and a lot of people, the first thing is be like, Sean, why are you just it once and then distill it again instead of just putting it through one still that's bigger? Yeah, right. So there's a lot, there's more to estification and making fruit flavors um, and complexity than it just gets boiled and goes to the still. Right. So there is some sort of magic that goes on by double distilling. You get more esters by doing so, um, right. so you can get a more complex spirit out the other side which plays against us when we're trying to make our light rums obviously yeah. but there'll be flavors in there that you wouldn't get if you distilled it straight into the cell cool um and some well the double retort takes that magic even further yeah because um if you ask like the germans they tell you why don't you use you know two plate column that's the same thing it's not it's pretty the double retort is almost like uh three pot stills joined together so it's yeah. almost like you do three step of distillations and there's esterification that goes on in that, in that still, that you can't really repeat by going through column. Right. So that's witchcraft. So that's, uh, okay. <laughs> so that's nailed. And I'll cut a picture in of the, the double retort in there. But the one thing, and I don't know kind of where to put this in, but I want to talk about muck and thunder. But actually, do we get onto the, the two Let's... types of still? Like, what is the difference between the two types of stills? You've got the pot with the double retort on it. Yeah. And you've got a hybrid, which is a pot and a column coming off it. So how is that going to create different rums, essentially? And that's without even talking about the amount of plates you use in a column still. I know this video could be like... Can I, can I, can I throw something in here? Because I think it's important to mention that alcohol... You're going to laugh. Is an aceotrope? Oh, you went there. <laughs> it's it's really it's really important because what's an aceotrope? Right. Well, it, it basically means that it shares. You're, he's the scientist, but it basically we should be asking him. But effectively, yeah. it means that it shares the boiling point. Yeah. With water. Yeah. Which is why you don't have out. Al so alcohol's got a lower boiling point than water, right? Yeah. And different. There are different al alcohols. Alcohols. Yeah. That have different yeah. boiling points. Yeah. But if we just loosely refer to them as a category of having lower boiling points than water. What happens is when they are together, because they have to be together for you to have done the fermentation, they sh they meet somewhere in the middle and sh and share a boiling point, right? Which is why water boils at less than 100 degrees and it takes more energy to boil some of the alcohol over. Meaning you don't go from having 10% fermented alcohol in your pot, heat it up and you have 100% alcohol, leaving behind all of the water. So... And this is an important thing to, to say because what happens is a lot of the 
a lot of the flavor is water soluble as well. Yeah. And a lot of the flavor comes on over with this. So if you twice pot distill, you are inevitably going to drag an awful lot of flavor over from your raw material, from whatever you fermented. The double retort, and to a certain degree, the hybrid column allows for a lot more reflux and a lot more esterification, generating esters, generating aroma, right? right? right. But what I'm talking about with a double pot, as opposed to double retort, is that it pulls over the original flavors that are in your wash, right? Not so much generating new flavors. If you think of the flavors in molasses, licorice quite heavy star anise, you're pulling over a lot of heavy flavors with your twice pot distilled rum. Okay. If you bypass, so, and that's if you bypass the column. If you go through the column for the second run, you're rectifying, cleaning the liquid as it goes, allowing for the separation of alcohols, and you're encouraging esterification within that. Cool. And you're going to get much lighter alcohol, much lighter aromas wow. coming over. That's, that's what I was going to ask, to drop in here. So is it fair to say the more, I don't know, how many plates have you got potentially in there? Eight, eight, eight. Is, is it fair to say that if you use all plate, eight plates, it's actually creating a lighter run than two plates? Is that, is that to dumb it right yes. down? Is that, yes. Yeah. But I always find with stills and this size, the deflamator. Yeah. We, we can talk about that. Yeah, go the deflag. Yeah. Because um, it's too much of a mouthful. Um, that's a bigger, of a, bigger of an effect on the number of plates. So what is it? The deflagmeter. That's the word, isn't it? It's meter. 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 Deflagmeter. What's yeah. a deflagmeter? It's right at the top of that. It's yeah. It's what? basically a condenser. Condenser. Uh, shell and tube condenser. So oh, all, the, all the vapor, the gas that's collected, it kind of condenses that into a liquid. Yeah. Right. They work kind of like a, I guess a radiator in some ways, and, and the oh. vapor passes through. Yeah. And it knocks the water out of it. So the original idea right. is to refine the heads yeah, and so that you get all your acetone out quite quickly, but you can also use it to up the ABV. So um, we, we basically control getting 90% using the deflag by running different amounts of water through it, cool it more or less. So just very quickly, before we talk about the, the pot and the, the double retort, what have you, so when you... When it comes off, well, first not even thinks you've already said it's up. I was going to say, how do you decide which rum you're putting through which still? Is it the aroma that that for men that wash has created, or is it kind of, is it just sort of playing around? I just want to say that loosely, it's why we refer to things as marks, right? Because we set out with an intention to yeah. create a specific style. Okay, so let's just butt in here very quickly because this is a question coming up in a second. What is a mark? Let's just dumb this right down. What is a mark? It's a rum. It's a rum. It's a recipe. It's, it's a rum that's got a a certain flavour. It's 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 a series of steps that tell us how to produce a particular style of rum. Right. So it tells us what which raw material, how much of it, what ratio, whether we add dunder to the, to that fermentation or not, how long to ferment it for, what stills or still to put it through. Um, and and that mark will be very different to if we changed any of those bits of that that recipe. So essentially, a mark is is just I'm re-emphasizing the point here is just simply a rum with a certain set flavor. Yes, and yeah. and all rums do have a certain it's set of flavor. So it's just a row. So a rum and then products. Let's just we're, without talking too much about it, but the funk drop will have a couple of different marks in it couple of different this this started as having three marks three marks we actually decided that one of the marks was just so good that it didn't need to be blended with other two other marks so we've ended up just going with one mark one mark so that is one mark right. however yeah. that is four yeah that's two and and this is one as well. one right so we've got marks let's just come back to <clears throat> oh sorry just on go on We'll tend to fill barrels with a single mark. mark. And we then color code what those barrels are on the other yeah. side to tell us which mark is in that barrel. So we all know, is it double pot, yeah. double retort, hybrid column? Was it panella honey, like cane honey, or was it molasses? Yeah. How long was it fermented for? We know just by looking at the color yeah. painted on the barrel. And I'll, I'll 
put this up on screen because I know I've got a photo of this, but just to emphasize, you're not coloring the rum, it's the barrel on the Yeah, we paint it. We put the paint on the outside. Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. so there, there you're right. So you've got a reference point of what the liquid is. So you can blend. Right. Let's go. So we've talked about this beast. Very, very, I know we're talking for ages about this beast, but talking about that one over there, that's your pot still. Why Why have you got a double retort on it? Why Why have a double retort? Why not just a pot still? There's a lot of single pot stills in the UK. Can we just, can we just yeah. get him to promise that he will also do a video with us at some point where we describe and discuss what a column does? Because columns have a really bad reputation. Yeah. And it's not fair. That's, they have a bad reputation because there are a lot of... Mm -hmm mass market products yeah. made on stainless steel enormous continuous columns this is discontinuous yeah which is different yeah and single yeah uh, and it is there's a real art and a wonderful thing that's going on in that column. so i think i can dumb this down very very quickly i think basically what you're getting at say like some of the, the spanish islands they've got a continuous still where the still is just going and just going and going and going this is very much a one shot this, uh, yeah, I mean, that goes through yeah. column and all, you collect it. All three of them are pot stills, technically. Yeah. So we've got right. a pot, it's a hybrid. It's, it's a hybrid. hybrid. So it's yeah. a pot attached to a column. Yeah. And what happens in a column, yeah. especially when you use it the way we do, is magical. Yeah. It's not something to be looked down upon, or if you know it's got column rum in there, that's great. And actually, yeah. there's so much flavor in this due to the way that it's distilled through the column. I, th I think. I'm going to bring up Chairman's Reserve here, mm -hmm. if, if that's allowed. I know I'm at Drop Waves, but I love to. Ch Chairman's Reserve, love some Lucia. They've got more sills, of which two of them are column sills, but they're column where they play about with different plates, yeah. different amount of plates to get, and they actually produce some heavier rumps. So you can mm -hmm. produce heavier yeah. rumps off a column still. Yeah. The TDL do that as well. TDL is trying to. So a lot of that, you know, column. So you don't just think of column still as. Higher ninety two percent flavourless rum. Yeah. No, well, another, another example would be agricole. Yeah. They use columns. Yes. Yeah. You know, which they cross the rules about that. They can only use. We've we've deep dived into that, but they can. They've got to be a certain width with a certain amount of plates in them. Yeah. But you, right. what you don't do is taste an agricole and go, "Oh, it's a bit neutral." Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's plenty of flavour, and they've been distilled on columns. So, so, remember, so let's go back. So we we we've we've done that. Go on. Do you want to know why we don't have one? What? Why you don't have a, a continuous column? It's a, yeah, I don't know anyone that has actually. Well, it's on. because they take about six hours to get going. Ah. And then they're best if they run for like four weeks. Wow. <laughs> and then you turn it off. So, uh, <laughs> right? Yeah. Because they're continuous. You keep feeding yeah, it. You just keep feeding it, right? Yeah. And they, they take time to stabilize. And it is actually, I've never run one, but I've read about it. I spoke to a few folks that have. And it's quite an art in itself getting the thing balanced and keeping because you imagine you've got to balance your flow in yeah you flow out and the coolant through it and get it all dancing and singing nicely so that you don't end up throwing uh you know alcohol down the drain because you yes it constantly drains out um pot ale that has no alcohol in but if you drain that too quick and it's not boiled all the alcohol out you lose your alcohol so it's like a real so then like in craft, there's a lot of all oh, columns and bad. They're not. They've just got their place. You know. I really want to go to Taiwan because yeah. Renaissance. Renaissance. Yeah, he's using a continuous armagnac still. I believe. I think he is. Yeah, based on the pictures. So I'd love to know how he's how he how he runs it and how and, and to taste it was coming off because he produces great. Yeah. Probably awesome. <laughs> 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 so okay, so we we, we can. I mean, we can dig dive into any subjects and go for it. You want to talk about double at all? Yeah. So you've yeah. got the pot still. Yeah. Why? I understand why you've got a pot. I think most people don't understand why you've got a pot. Might that. Why then a double retort? What does a double retort do, and why? Why have you brought it? Witchcraft. Witchcraft. Yeah. So, so firstly, I just want to say this is the first in England in of this time. Like, so I got pulled up on this. Not not in Great Britain. <laughs> no, no, no. Because there's just two in Scotland. Yeah. Two one on Ireland. Right. That that was me, by the way. That was that wasn't Lewis first time around. That was me. I just went for the UK. Yeah. yeah, and and those those guys they've got beautiful yeah. stills. And you know what the, what the guys on Isla are doing is amazing. I love their run. So why so why why a double retort? What what does that bring that is a, a normal pop still? Why? Well, I just I just want to also add the fact that we're not used to seeing them in the UK because the gin distillery yeah. would typically have like a hybrid store or a column, um, and it, so. 
w w they, they may seem a bit strange to a UK yeah. um, population, but they are all across the Caribbean, especially yeah. the British speaking parts of the yeah. Arab. Why? What do they do? Interestingly, they're all, they're all in the British part of the Caribbean, but with not. From what I've read, I feel like they came from America, but I might be wrong. So, what the hell's a double retort? Come on. So, that, what's the double retort? <laughs> Honestly, witchcraft is the best way to witchcraft. start it. Yeah. So, um, we've got to go through like <laughs> high lines and low yeah. lines. So, this is coming in. They're, they're listed here. Can my short my, you can, He's going to go through the long answer. The short yeah. answer is it encourages esterification. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So, you get very aromatic yeah. drums coming on. So, yeah. Can we bring in to this whole conversation? I'm gonna I'm gonna start this thing. We say what are low wines and what in high what are high wines, and then we can yeah. narrow down what is what the double retort is doing. Okay. Yes? Yeah. So it's three questions there. It is three passion. Go on. So was it sort of how it works, I guess. Yeah. So uh the double retort has a wash pump directly into it. Yep. We then put heads in that, which is the first part of the distillation, the previous distillation. Yep. And so the head is the first part, yes. higher ABV. Yeah, it's like, you know, 80-odd percent. Yeah. It smells like acetone. Yeah. It's actually pretty grim. Yeah. But it goes in there. And because distillation is based around relative volatility, yeah. right, and you do actually get something good out of those heads. Well, you heads get... what you're calling high? No. No. No, that's separate. So we've got oh. heads. Right. Uh, spirit. Yeah. High wines, low wines. So oh, right. Whiskey distillers, we call them faints. For yeah. the, the high wine and low wines are basically faints. Right. They're split in two, um, and they go into each retort. Right. So this is where the magic of the double retort is. You're putting your faints in each retort right. of different strengths. So it comes out the pot, and it'll probably be 50% first thing in the morning. It then dies into a whole load of liquid, and our still is about 20%. Um, obviously, that's higher than the percentage in the pot. So it actually gains more strength. It then passes over into the next retort, where it usually actually is like sort of 45, 50%, um, bubbles away and vaporizes again and comes out uh, first thing in the morning, like 8 and 2%. So you steps up the ABV as it goes from uh, pot to retort to retort and then out. But because you've got all these different ABVs mixing and it bubbles the vapor through the alcohol. You get much more pickup um, uh, of like the flavor, if you like, and you get more es um, esterification yeah. going on um, because you've got you know more copper contact with these huge retorts. And of course, this all leads into. I've got a couple of questions coming off the back of it, but this will all lead into the, the different yeast that you're having with the different. The washer's fret is is all the time going to be creating different low wines and I'm, so yeah, that's just not one set flavor that's going in there. That's that can create lots of different flavors in itself. We it could do without the actual. In in fairness, we put tend to now put yeah. the same wash in it every day. But what we do do uh, is in introduce some muck, yeah, um, and right. some vinegar. Cool. Okay. Just want this is where we can bring in muck and that. That's that's cool. Like, I just want to clarify one thing because certainly what I thought, and I dare say a vast majority of people at home, the thing was that. Literally, there'd be nothing in those double retorts. What that was actually, it was just uh, the vapor condensing, falling into that, and then going through another sort of. Di but you're actually putting low wines and high wines in those retorts yeah. to kind of react with the rum that you're kind of distilling in there. Yeah. Right. That correct at a really yeah, low yeah. level? Yeah, yeah. Perfect. Yeah. Right. So, where does thunder, muck, and what was the other one you said a minute ago? Vinegar. 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 I'm, I'm talking. I'm taking. We're not talking about sarsen's vinegar that you put on chips. <laughs> no, it's our own cane vinegar. Right. So, what is vinegar? Literally, so uh, we ferment uh, a small fermentation vessel. Yeah. Up to like eight and nine percent, and then we put our si cider vinegar mother in there. Cider vinegar mother. Yeah. That's right. And we basically make a giant tank full of vinegar. Yeah. So. Okay, so you've got that. We understand what that is. How much of that relative... So what's the size of the still? So it's a 1,500 litre still. 1,500 litre still. How much roughly? Without giving too much of your technical know-how away. So, so give us a, a ballpark. We've got 60 litres. 60 litres. Oh, there you go. If you want to distill rum in the UK, 60 Roughly. Roughly. No, right. I mean, roughly, precisely, 60 litres out of 1,500. On top of it. <laughs> Just on top of 1,500. On top of the 1500. Yeah. Okay. And um, muck we add in there too. Cool. So 
Let's bring in. So, what would you talk about first, Muck or Dunder? Dunder, really. Dunder. So, what's Dun What is Dunder? Dunder, it looks basically pot ale. So, it's the uh, uh, contents are still after you've distilled. So, it's okay. Back to pretty much molasses and water, but it's had half the sugar removed and the alcohol so removed. Is it fair to say that you can't have Dunder until you've distilled? Yeah. Yeah, that's yeah. correct. That's okay. a byproduct of distilling. Distilling. It's a non alcoholic byproduct left in the pot. Left in the yeah. pot. So, are we talking like a, a, a dark, sludgy kind of... What does Thunder look like? Um, it looks like the wash, but it's a bit sludgy. It's sludgy. Yeah, because it's got the yeast in there too. Okay. That you've cooked. Yeah. So you're not adding Thunder to the still. No. The Thunder is the leftover after you've distilled. Yeah. Right. Well, that's the fermentation. You have that. that's, that's cool. I'm that. I got that, and I'm coming back to that in a second. But what's muck? Well, um, it's actually... Dunder and Stunder. Although everyone so has their own way of doing it. So you're taking the Dunder out of the still, you're then putting it in a, a use and I'd be what you use. You've got a Dunder tank, haven't you? Yeah. I'll flash it up on screen and take the photo of that. It's fully over I mean, uh, Is that why I stuck my head in? What did I stick my head in earlier? Yeah. That was a tank. muck tank. Yeah. Why? This found being mucky, okay. right? There, yeah, there's a video, there's a photo on screen of that. So your muck is aged to thunder how long is it aged for is it just ongoing have you got a, have you got different currently it's ongoing but i think we might as you've said it comes to the end of needing that you meant to be balance it eventually uh, yeah. like putting fresh in and taking the old out like, uh, sort of feed it like a stomach yeah. yeah and i think uh because we've got quite a big tank and we've not been using that much we've soured a bit soured okay but there's a reason we're doing it. Yeah. Like, so there's one thing to understand what it is. Yeah. But there's you might yeah. you might want to ask why. Yeah. I was that, well, like, that's what's coming. You know, it's, it's good at this. It's like it's always the. Well, I'm just like, yeah. I'm just, why? Go why? On. So we've got. <laughs> so right. It depends so where you at. I thought. I think. I think we. Hang on. I think I'm just trying to work this through in my head. So, is it fair to say that different? And this is all going to come back and tie into different marks that you're distilling mm. and different rums that you're making off. Is it fair to say that a muck? from different distillation runs is going to be different or is it all is it got a different flavor by far or would it not would we only we only have it's... one muck tank you've got one so you just put it together yeah yeah but would it be in like two years time would it be fair to say that as you go down this journey you'll have different like would a muck be marginally different off that compared to that one no no it's well yeah it could be but that's not what we're doing yeah, it's not what you're doing yeah. so the point now is You've got your thunder, or yep. your muck. Yeah. Why? So dunder, <laughs> dunder seems to be quite go, effective. Why? Dunder's quite effective as a yeast food. Yeah. But as you remember me saying, only half of the sugars are fermentable. It contains quite a lot of sugars that are unfermentable. And when you add that into your fermentation, it obviously also has to crush it. Right. So it was a yeast gout sap. I mean, yeast gout sap, they tend to make more pre plate Right. So... Or the precursors anyway, the SC. Um, and so that's why we use that. The mock um, has a similar effect to the lees, I guess. So bra and brandy, some brandies will either separate the yeast out, down yeah. for they make sure the yeast goes into the still and the vet two separate mark that they like to leave. And because the uh, yeast Bring down and we get these foreign bacteria. I'm trying to keep this simple. Yeah. Um, now you are, I think you're doing the work, yeah. And you get a wholly different acid. Yeah. And as we know, acid plus alcohol equals ester. Yeah. So not only can you change uh, well, the alcohol's present, you then change the acid's present and you change the esters that are made. So muck is like a big factory of making acid. And in fact, what was smelling, smelling really sour, probably means that all the acids goodness is really getting going fine so we are, might actually want to keep it like that i just haven't quite decided if it's working better or not um and there's not that much written down about a knock and like and i know Harriet Watt are doing some studying on it i keep meaning to to if they want to come down and study that yeah do, do you have to do anything to is it just in that tank or are you adding heat to that or no no it's, it's just, just a big tank, tank of store uh, yeah. stored stored and they would clunk in some fresh dunder every now and again, and they'd tape out um, some muck. And like, so we've basically balancing the system. It's like, real thumb down way. It's basically a clever way. Why am I perfect? Well, it's, it's a clever way of having seasoning 
Yeah. So your yeah rum distillate. Yeah. Acidic seas wash. Right. Right. So, so there's a running thing with acid, right? So we, we were trying to make some acids in that. Yeah. But the vinegar also is acidic, right? Yeah. So you can basically throw in the pH so you'll make more esters. Because in high school uh, chemistry, esterification, you basically add pure acid yeah. to a beaker uh, with some cop uh, copper present and tea for it. And uh, you get some esterification. And we're kind of doing that in a biological way. So I think the one final question that I can think of there is in a grand scheme thing. So you're in that, in that still, you're adding 1,500 litres of rum. Yeah. Not rum. Well, it's not rum. Sorry, I'm watching. Swash, wash, wash. You had me there for a second. Yeah. So I had myself there for a second. So you're adding 15, you're adding in 60 litres, give or take, of vinegar. Yeah. What is the growth? Like how, it's just, is it different? Do you add, you don't have to give it the exact thing, but would you add different amounts of muck to different distillation runs, create different flavour profiles? You could do. You could do. We tend not, not to. You tend like to. The more variability you get. Yeah, of the all sort of mad things going on. Yeah, the more hard it is to tell what actually did the goodness in the first. So you're trying to just that you found you found your ways of getting your marks. Yeah, and that's very much the recipe that you're. Yeah, yeah, man. Why? Yeah, I think the final thing that we have to go. So we'll get, obviously, you know, to thumb this one down, the stills are going through. You're collecting rum. Any rum? It's actually rum now off the still, baked stills, even stills at what ninety seven eighty B down to. Some barrels, berries. So, so, so the still you take your lowest cut. The double retort makes the lowest strength in general. If the line's got less rectification, yeah. another big word. Basically, it doesn't separate alcohol from water quite so well. So it starts off at like 80 and, and then we'll cut in the mid 70s. And I have And highly of Colin can make 94 on a good day. Um, and then we'll cut the sort of CT8. There is actually one more question coming here before I get into barrels, and I'm, I'm not going to go too in depth to barrels, just a couple of things. But when you say cut, do you stop this stilly? I know, it's actually you turn the valve. You turn the valve, but, and then you're still collecting. Yeah, is that right? So um, on your door retort, yeah. you, you know, as the still comes in, yeah. I start collecting your hands. Yeah. And so a pin driver put that into a bucket, which is not so glamorous. Uh, it tends to be sort of 20 litres or so. Yeah. And can sometimes be like, there's three, three green. Um, which is fun. Yeah. And then we create spirit after that. Yeah. And then we wait till the with drops. And basically we're looking for kind of off layers really. Now a certain amount of, uh, you know, uh, faint, fainty sort of flavors and good. And I, I basically the more you include of those, the longer it's going to take to age. Yeah. So if you're making a, you know, a clear rum, a white rum, and you was hot, like less you want a very narrow cut whereas if you're going to age for 20 years then you want a longer cut because no, 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 no. interesting yeah rum is yeah rum when it gets aged like we've got to factor in your spirit versus the cast yeah. as well as i'm working together right because if your spirit's like very clean like right. vodka almost you know and then any bit of wood flavor is going to make that wood flavored right whereas actually a real rum is not just wood flavour, is it? It's it's this combination. There's more to it than this. So, well, so kind of before we buy, before it's just very quick because I think barrels are more coming into what we talk about here. But what do you do with those the the, the heads and the cut after? A, what what so, happens? They just get recycled back into the still. Recycled back into that yeah. wash still, the strictly run still. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And on the um, highway con, they go yeah. back and with hot. There's a low line. Okay. And then now I kind of get restilled, and, or it's maybe so. The, the, there's no cuts on the wash still. Yeah, the wash still is just bad. So there's nothing yeah. to recycle there. Yeah, yeah. So the only recycling of cuts go, happens with the finishing stills, the, the hybrid and the double as well. I think. Even that's our methanol, man. Yeah. <laughs> everyone wants us for methanol. Methanol? Yeah. Why? On well, boats, right? Well, because everyone's like, oh, do you, do, you, do you not go blind if you mess up distillations? Right. Kids, don't distill at home. Bad idea, you know. Blow yourself up. Might make yourself get blind. I think. I think safety announcement. Pulling safety announcement. It's illegal. And that's what I'm just going to say. Yeah. It's illegal. Don't do it. Right. But realistically, distilling rum, methanol, not an issue. And everyone thinks methanol comes out first. Mole, it doesn't. What's going to say? It comes out. It comes out in the face. Um, and you can Google yeah. a study that was done about that. 
um, because it's relative volatility that makes alcohol separate in a cell, not not their boiling point. It's how much they love water. Right. So some molecules love water so much they yep. don't want to leave the pot. Like uh, the fuse, a lot of fusel oils just end up going down the drain. Okay. And um, whereas other ones, like acetone, is like straight out oh. there. Right. Okay. And that's why. So I, that I, I think we've got the whole distillation process. I mean, we could, as I say, we could do spend another few hours on that. Well, I think we've done better. Let's just get on to the, the agent. So let's be honest, right? How long after that distillation process for an unaged rum would you bring it down to set ABV and bottle it? Would you rest it for a day? Would you rest it for six weeks? So I don't mind diluting and casking pretty much straight away. Yeah. Um, I just like to make sure that the alcohol is actually next to the water properly and the ABV is correct. Yeah. Um, when you dilute high strength alcohol, it tends to jump up in temperature. Uh, which causes issues of measuring it. Right. Because we measure using density. Yeah. And if it's not all the same temperature, then you get run to goof. Um, so, so effectively, you can... In winter, it's way better. In winter, you can literally just slap the water in, yeah. give it a good stir, throw it in a barrel. In summer, and to dilute it over like two days, yeah. then put it in a barrel. If it's going to strain a bottle, I like to rest it like a month, at least near its ABV. So like... Yeah. If we're going to fall at, you know, 45, I'll have it at 46 for like nearly a month. And then we'll just carefully nudge it down. Right. Okay. Uh, probably closer to the time, just in case some evaporates. Right. Because uh, yeah. it's really easy to make it lower strength. Okay. Cool. Not to be to So then right. just the time, and I, think, I, I don't think this will be educating too many people. I think most people understand this, but just looking around your barrel storage out there, Asian rums, you've got a, a shed load of different barrels. Yeah. With, Loads of different and what do you call them? Ends, ends, all ends, yeah, yeah, heads, Space. ends, yeah, top tops barrels and, and heads, head, yeah, what, what, so <laughs> ends, ends, tops, tips, ends. tops, up. yeah. So it's better just for those that really don't understand different barrels. Like, let, let's just get rid of the whole we know sherry, egg sherry barrels and it's pork barrels are gonna impart sherry flavor in pork barrels, you kind of get that, but you've got different. American oaks and French oaks. And, and I think this might be, because you mentioned this earlier, that's why I'm picking up on this. What, what, what's the difference between like an American oak and a French oak that have just, I'm assuming they're ex bourbon. Yeah. You're looking at me nodding. You're like, no, 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 they're, they're, no, they're not. They're not. They're not. Okay. No. So we, we have ex bourbons. Yeah. For, firstly, firstly, just to say that. Technically, like each cask, because each tree could produce different flavor profiles, like, and it's to do with the chemicals, and not just chemicals, it could be carbohydrates in the oak, if we're using oak at all in the wood. Yeah. Um, there's different tannins, there's different, there's lots of different chemical compounds in the wood. If you heat that, charring it, toasting it, you get different characteristics developing Char within that. Charring and toasting is just basically setting fire to the thing. Two, two separate things. Yeah. Toasting, uh, a, a more gentle heat for, for a slightly longer time to sort of caramelize and break down some of the, some of the, the, the sugars in the wood. Yeah. Um, and then charring will be more like a flame throwing it. So you're, you're effectively like it's a high flame for a very short amount of time, sort of up to a minute. Most, all that can influence. So you've got different, different char levels, different toast levels, yeah. different and you're, of time. And you're going to get different flavors just from different toasts and char levels, yeah. let alone the different tree or, the, or, or where it was grown. Just remember the guys that are building these, when they're flame throwing it, it's like, uh, here's my stopwatch, click. Yeah. And if one's a bit lazy on the yeah. stopwatch, they end up slightly different. So yeah. variance is quite Just, just so we've got, because I, I kind of have a loose knowledge of this, but just so we kind of understand it, we're not talking like 10 minutes so that we're literally talking 10 seconds up to... 60 seconds maybe Ch charring is yeah. 15 seconds is char level one 30 is char level two 35 is char level three and second 55 seconds for yeah. char level four okay it was alligator yeah. char and then the smoke would take another minute then they sit out yeah. the fire out and they slap a lid on yeah. it and let the smoke stay in there for a minute so even if we're just x bourbon whatever you know american oak mm. x bourbon you could have so many different 
flavors imparted from so many different barrels yeah. into your... So even though a run has said, you know, expert, ex-American uncle or whatever, yeah. it relatively doesn't mean anything other than it's been aged for. It could, you know... No. If, if we face it, I think the best way to describe it, if we distillery will produce different run in different... You know what I'm trying to say. <laughs> I think so. Let, 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 let me try and phrase it our way, which would be to say that, firstly, Latin names are worth having a look at. So we talk about American oak or, f or French oak. Yeah. There are different Latin names that tell you a bit more about, is it species? Is that the, is that the correct term of tr for, for a tree? Yeah. So Quercus alba, Quercus roba, Quer Quercus, um, I don't know how you pronounce this one, but Patricia, Patricia or, or something like that. There are different species of oak tree. Yeah. It's not just the fact that it's grown in France or grown in America. It's American because it's grown there. It's a different species of tree. If you actually look at an oak tree, sometimes you'll see different leaves on different oak trees. There are different types of oak tree. Yeah. And those trees will have different characteristics. Mm -hmm. A large part of it is to do with how fast it grows and the hardwood in it, like um, compared to the softer wood inside it, as in like, how much of it was allowing water to, to carry up and th and the permeability of, of that. Um, so you get different flavors coming from different oaks. You can then char it or toast it or both. Ex-bourbons, they come to you as they are. So you kind of got to know a bit about the bourbon distillery you're buying it from and what sort of flavor profile they're achieving. So for example, I believe Wild Turkey have a char level uh, four, whereas most other distilleries would go for char level three. So if you're getting a wild turkey cask, you're, you're getting a, a wild, it's, it's emptied out of the wild turkey, but it's, it's a, probably a higher level char than, than the other ones. Okay. Um, but the majority of our casks are STRs, yeah. which are old wine barrels. Yeah. So nothing to do with bourbon. So if you're going to come on to what STR means. Yeah, I am. So shaved, toasted, and recharged. So basically imagine a wine barrel they empty out the wine and then they sort of regenerate the barrel. And they do so by shaving out the inside of the cask. They then re-toast it. They go, go through the toasting process again and then they rechar it. So they will, it's basically like making a new barrel from an old wine barrel. Um, and that sort of regenerates it, but it's not quite like using a virgin cask, which has still never been used. Nothing. Go on, John. The thickness of the wine seems on big nights in yeah. my experience. So hardwood is porous. Yeah, wood yeah. is porous, so it's thinner. It's more porous. Yeah. Um, so you get more angle share from the STRs than do the ex-bourbons. You have about half an inch difference in thickness. Ah, uh, okay. Uh, and in theory as well, if it's thicker, you've got more carbohydrates, more... Yeah. Um, more flavor in the barrel that's potentially able to, to so come through. I'm going to bring this whole conversation to a close now by summing it up like this. Stilling rum with the setup you've got is can be way more fun and way more complex <laughs> than distilling vodka in gin. <laughs> <laughs> it's a no brainer. Is that, is that fair yeah. to say? Yeah. That's just blown my tiny little mind. All that little... There's a lot of variables. Yeah. So many different variables can create so many different types of rum. Yeah. If we just load your mind, I have to write the thing down. <laughs> Coming in 2026, Sean's Guide of How to Still Run. So I think we'll leave that there. That's been brilliant. I think we should you know, do a video where we kind of explain what these are. Yeah. Good. Good. Yeah. Sean, are you going to say anything else? No, it's fine. I, do, I want to say one more thing. Go on in. But this won't necessarily fit in the flow of things, but I want to say it anyway. Just Sean described a chemistry lesson where he added acids to an alcohol. Yeah. If you do that, the acid that you're adding determines the ester that's created. Right. You can only create the ester from the specific acid. You don't get a range of esters yeah. from one acid, right? So the reason we do all this crazy stuff with muck and age it and allow bacteria to do this thing is because you get a whole diverse range of acids created. Right. We're not controlling that, and that's why we allow biology to do its thing, because it then means you get a whole load of esters that are unique to your setup, to your environment, to your location, that no one else gets. And it sort of helps generate unique flavors for, for your own distillery. Right. Boom. On that note, join us in video three, where we'll kind of talk you through what exactly these are.